Good evening, everybody. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's a little after 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday as I'm recording this video, which in one way is not great because uh, the expectation that I had of myself and I think that you have of me is that this Wednesday's video reflection would be posted by now which meant it needed to be done an hour or more ago. And yet, I confess to you that I'm just getting to it now because I'm stuck. And I suspect I'm not the only one. The world has changed a lot for a lot of us over the last three weeks or so here in Fall City. And the truth is, a lot of our expectations, a lot of our ways of doing things have kind of needed to go out the window. And that's hard because we human beings love continuity. We are creatures of habit. A lot of us really delight in having some predictability, uh, having a sense of knowing what's coming next in our lives. And a lot of that has really been upended by the situation in which we find ourselves now. And that can be a really unsettling thing. I know it has been for me. This week I've been sitting down trying to map out what Holy Week is going to look like with the services of Palm Sunday and Monday, Thursday and Good Friday and even Easter Sunday are going to look like in a time when we can't gather. And a lot of things will be very similar. When you sit down for those services, you're going to hear things that are really familiar, but you're also going to be doing it from a place and in a way that we've never had to before. And that means that some things are going to have to be different in those services. I think I knew that already, but sitting down this week to really ponder what needs to be different for us to be able to engage in worship in this unprecedented time has been sort of an unsettling experience. I don't know what your job or your life particularly has been like during this COVID-19 pandemic. I know teachers are struggling to figure out what it looks like to teach students, to impart knowledge to students, to continue to be in relationship with students when that face-to-face -face interaction that's so vital, that one-on-one -on -one attention that is so critical to good learning is not possible in the same way. I hear that farmers are out there just as much as ever because they're essential employees and they're trying to get all their preparations made to do the work that needs to be done every planting season and, and do all of those things. And some of you folks are probably retired and you may not necessarily have anywhere that you need to go, but the fact that you don't have the option of going to places that you often have is different and maybe frustrating for you as well. Life is weird now for students and government employees and doctors and nurses and everybody out there. We're all trying to wrap our heads around what to make of this new world that hopefully will not be with us for a long time, but that is going to persist in some ways just because it's not possible to simply go back to the way things were before. I know that's a hard thing to hear. But a disruptive moment like this has the potential for us to learn some things about ourselves, about our community, about what's important in life. Thankfully, as I've been pondering the work that I do here as your pastor, some things do remain the same. The gospel is still the gospel. 
the good news is still the good news. We still have the opportunity to reach out with the message of hope and love and peace and joy that is ours to share in Jesus. And I hope that you're having opportunities to encounter that message, not just through the videos that I'm posting or through some of the other things that are coming to you, uh, but in the way that you're continuing to reach out to members of our congregation, to your friends and your neighbors, uh, to your loved ones who may live close to you or far away. A lot of things are different, but a lot of things are the same too. We still have this calling to be God's hands and feet in a world that needs God's work to be done. We still have this calling to check on our friends and neighbors and loved ones and help them to know that they're not alone, even if we feel alone some of the time. We still have this calling to be the body of Christ for the sake of the world. I know this is hard. I know that things are different than they've ever been before. And I know that the idea that things aren't just going to instantly go back to the way they were before is a scary thought. But there is good news in it. And the good news is that Christ continues to walk with us, to live within us, to dwell among us. Christ is here with us as we face the uncertain days ahead. God's Spirit is continuing to move in the world, making possible things that we didn't think were possible before. And Christ is present in our neighbors, in the people who are continuing to do the necessary work um, on the front lines of this pandemic, and out in the fields, the kind of work that we often don't have to think about, but that is really vital to the life we share as a community. Whether you're one of those essential employees who's still out there doing the work that needs done, or whether you find yourself at home trying to work in a crisis, I pray that your eyes will be open to see all the places and spaces in which God is still at work, in which Christ is still present, in which the Spirit is still moving. Those things are there. I pray that we will have the eyes to see them and that we'll be able to, in seeing them, rejoice in God's power and presence that is still being displayed in a scary and uncertain world. Peace be with you, friends in Christ. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Good night.